Okay, now on to Jeer Falcons. Jeer Falcons are the biggest falcon in the world. Ooh, go back there. Okay, sorry. Messed that one up there. Okay. They have a wide range of color phases. So uh, we normally think of them, since they're arctic, as being white. But they can be nearly pure white. They can be nearly pure black. And they can be quite the mix in between. Now, cheer falcons weigh as much or more than red-tailed hawks. At least the, the big females do. So there's a red-tailed hawk and a cheer falcon by comparison. But remember, falcons have shorter legs and they're more compact and dense than hawks. So a, a red-tailed hawk would have measurements longer than a jeer falcon, but a jeer falcon can weigh every bit as much, if not more so. Now, I, again, I made this presentation based off of Utah. Uh, we do have jeer falcons sighted in Utah quite frequently. Most of them are migrants from Idaho and Montana. What do they look like? They don't like look like this bird in this picture. They're not a traditional looking jeer. They look more like this, or more like this. They're sort of a, a brownish jeer. This is one that was trapped in Utah by a bird bander and in November, so it wasn't even during our cold season yet. It was trapped, banded, and set free. Here's one that was uh, trapped by a banding station in Idaho. Again, a very uh, brown-colored jeer. That's that same bird. Here's another one trapped in Utah and banded and released. Again, uh, very brown. Don't mistake it for a dark peregrine or a dark prairie, though. Here's another one. Again, very brown. So it's a big falcon. They do have very bluish white feet and sear and skin around their eyes their first year. Here's a couple more. But these uh, are adults, and you can see they've retained that sort of uh, grayish-brown color. They have molted to have different patterns, but you still have sort of that grayish-brown coloration. Okay, on to a tropical species, the Oplomato falcon. This is a really neat species. Now, it's actually a South American species that has moved north. So this is the range, and you can see the range barely goes into the United States, but it's all throughout Mexico, Central America, and South America. So the species is doing great. It, it's, its numbers are great. Uh, the biggest threat in the U.S. are prairie falcons. Prairie falcons will go after them and try to eat them. Uh, North American versus Peruvian. Um, so this is a North American uh, Oplomato falcon like you would see in Arizona or New Mexico or Texas. These are Peruvian, captive bred Peruvian Oplomato falcons. Now, uh, the, the species itself, again, is doing great. Uh, I think in the United States, they currently list it as an endangered species. The species is not endangered in any way, shape, or form. The population in the United States is at risk but the species is not truly endangered. So the Peruvian Oplomatos have more color and are larger than the North American subspecies. There's a Peruvian. If you see one in captivity, uh, whether for falconry or education or at a zoo or an aviary, it is most likely a captive bred Peruvian individual. There's another Peruvian. And again, compared to the, the one in the United States, where the upper chest is, is very white. So, wild North American pairs, they hunt together in their breeding territory. Uh, they hunt and they flush out together and they work as a team. Uh, and their hunting style is very similar to occipiters. And there are many people who have seen them hunting in the wild compare it very much to a cooper's hawk. Uh, in that they do these short flash and dash type hunting and that they'll, they're will they willing to crash into the brush while chasing their prey. Most big falcons would never crash the brush like that, but Oplomatos will. This is the end of part six of this PowerPoint. Uh, check out part seven to see the rest of this presentation.